Okay, so I like to say there's nothing wrong with a little nostalgia from time to time. So what better way to reminisce than by going to a throwback arcade, which brings us to Arcade 92. I feel like a kid right now, so who wants to play? How did you come up with the name RK92, the idea, and why bring it here to McKinney of all places? So the slogan of RK92 is, it's time to play again. And, and the, the premise of that is we are built for adults. So I wanted to call out to adults that are working too hard, spending too much time working, not making time for themselves, to come here and play again. So a better way to do that than by adults who were probably kids or a young adult in the 90s. I've kind of laid the place out like a living museum. And where we are right now is the, what would be considered the first golden age of the arcades from the late 1970s up to about the mid um, uh, 1980s. Okay. The oldest game I have greets you right here when you walk in the front door, and that's Space Invaders, made from 1978. <laughs> it's credited as being the game that started it all. Now, in America, we're a little bit more familiar with games like Galaga, and Pac-Man because right. there was many more cabinets here in the States than there was of, uh, of Space Invaders. Let's see if I still got it. I love this home. All right, here we go. Here we go. Doesn't it bring you back? Yes, 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 yes. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. Still got it. We can walk through and you see great games like Donkey Kong and uh, yes. Dig Dug. I mean, these were some of the greatest games that really put arcades on the map. Games like uh, Asteroids, Tempest, Gauntlet. So plenty of games to choose from yeah. from the first golden age. But after 1985, things changed quite a bit. The arcades actually crashed. The whole industry fell apart. <laughs> so while there's plenty of games to choose from from what we saw just a moment ago, this is about it. There was not a lot of games available wow. in the late 1980s. And the reason why is because this game right here, Super Mario Brothers, changed it all. If we've all played Super Mario Brothers, you probably didn't do it in an arcade. You probably yeah. did it on a, on a Nintendo yeah, at home. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. That was one of the main reasons for the fall of the arcade is why would you come play here when you could play at, at home. home. Right. So Super Mario Brothers saved the industry, but on the same note, it changed it dramatically. Yes. But then things changed again in the 90s. So the name Arcade 92 comes from a reference to the year 1992, okay. which is considered the second golden age of the arcade. So what changed in the 90s is they started incorporating cooperative and competitive games. Interesting. So for example, Street Fighter is a popular game, Mortal Kombat is a popular It's you yeah. and a buddy playing at the exact same time nice. competitively. Then there was other games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Simpsons. Yeah. You could play with you and three other friends at the exact same time. You couldn't really do that at home. That wasn't really an option. So in 92, what really brought the arcades back again was competitive play and cooperative play. The second golden age of the arcades. Game on. Game Here on. We go. All right. Let's start. Well, so you're Scorpion, I'll be Sub-Zero because that's just... You that's, have that's, to. That's, Iconic. That's, that's what put this game on the map, right? Iconic these, matchup. These two ninjas. Nice, okay, Woo! very good. I did a very combo, good. I didn't even know. Aww. But it's crazy how you can Aww. remember these combos. All right. All right, so he has the harpoon throw. You just gotta get it smooth. It's back, back, low punch. Back, back, low punch. Oh, back, back, low punch. Low, back, low punch. Yeah. <laughs> back, back, low punch. There oh! it is, yes, well done, there it is. Very good. No! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's all coming back to me. Thank you yeah, for helping me with combos, but yes. I I need some work. <laughs> it takes some practice, it takes, but it all comes back fast. Yeah, that was so much fun. Back. Okay. You can't remember what you had for dinner last night, but you can remember Sub Zero combo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, this place is a living museum, so we fully embrace uh, the games from 1978 right. to games that came out last week. So over here, you'll see titles that may look familiar to you, such as Fortnite, um, there's Mario Kart over here, uh, Call of Duty, so very different. This is what our <laughs> arcade looks like today, so. There's chairs. There's chairs, you get a very. <laughs> You're not standing up. You get your own TV. <laughs> so that's why we brought Modern Gaming and Esports Lounge here at the arcade because it's a great way to still have community 
face to face, even though the games could be played online. So you right. can have true connection. You know, the games are great, but what could make it even better, now that you're an adult, right? Yeah. Is to have some, some adult beverages. Beverages, yeah. So we have about a dozen different beers on tap. We've got about 15 signature uh, cocktails that are all modeled after some type of game. No. Uh, so the game <laughs> inspires how we put a twist on the cocktail. Very cool. Uh, and then we have about 40 to 60 different bottled and canned beverages. And then we have a kitchen as well. So if you're hungry, we got you covered there. And we have uh, over a dozen menu items that are also uh, gaming themed. All right, time to play some games. Come on. Bing. Okay. Remember these? Oh my gosh. Nintendo. Fun fact, never played an Atari before. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shoo! How do I move it? Gotcha, sucker. I have no clue what I'm doing. Come on, come on, sucker. Yeah! No! Up, 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 stupid. What are you doing? I don't like this game. Now I'm a bit. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this all the time. Come on, come on! I'm done. Here we go. Did it! I won! Go up, go up. I'm so mad. I'm gonna step away, winner. Thank you very much. <laughs> no one. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw, there's plenty of retro fun here at RK92 and adult fun too. So I got a game to beat. I'll see y'all later. Come on, come on. All right, y'all, we are here at the Fairmont Hotel. Heard a lot of really amazing things about this place. And I also heard that they have an amazing Italian food restaurant. So let's go check it. Known as the jewel of San Antonio, the Fairmont dates back to 1906. Fast forward to today, this renowned hotel is among the grandest historic buildings in the city and is home to outstanding cuisine. And to welcome us, the executive chef of in-house restaurant Nona Osteria. Here we are in, in the heart of San Antonio downtown uh, at the Fairmont Hotel. Uh, that is a super historical uh, building in San Antonio. Uh, it's become very famous because a couple of decades ago has been moved from a couple of blocks away and it still represents the sense of historical the hotel we had. It's modern and historical at the same right. time. Well, meanwhile, I'm going to be downstairs prepping for our lunch. All right, perfect. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Here I'm making one of our famous dishes that is the wild boar pasta. I'm starting making the sauce uh, with a mix of carrots, onion, celery, a little bit of brandy and a little bit of oil. At this point I'm gonna put in the meat. So the, we use a wild boar shoulder and uh, we braised the shoulder with a bunch of red wine. So this is gonna be the meat and now I'm gonna drop the pasta and we're gonna finish the plate. Pappardelle al cinghiale. about you and your background as a chef? I was born and raised in Italy and I grew up in a family that loved to cook and loved to entertain. 25 years later I'm here you know at the Fairmont Hotel with this uh, uh, with this beautiful restaurant okay. to run. So Nona, what does Nona mean and then tell us about the restaurant itself. So Nona means uh, grandmother uh, in Italian. My Nona is really the inspiration behind my cooking. 
Four years ago, Nonna and the Silo Group, we built up our first restaurant, Nonna, in this space where we try to keep the historical side of it, uh, but married with something more contemporary. And that's uh, our goal moving on with this uh, building. The Fairmont is, uh, is a fantastic project for us, and we want it to become uh, this uh, beautiful culinary destination for everybody that come and visit San Antonio. Beside Nonna, we have a Silo Steakhouse that is prime and then on the rooftop we have a oyster bar that is fantastic, have an amazing view. I definitely need to go see it. <laughs> so what dish is Nona known for? We try to have a very traditional Italian menu that is focused on the simplicity of the dishes. One is a burrata dish uh, that has uh, this uh, presentation of different vegetables uh, with a very creamy burrata. It's a dish that everybody loves and uh, maybe later on we can try to do it together. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Very good. We're gonna make burrata. Fantastic. So, asparagus, tomato, artichoke and zucchini are gonna go in the pizza oven be behind us. Okay. And the cauliflower is gonna go in the fryer. Oh, okay. So I can give you this plate, you can put it in the oven. So I'm cooking more at home. Do you have any tips for me? Cook as much as you can and don't be afraid about okay. it, right? Uh, worst for worst, you can order pizza and, exactly. and save the night. We didn't set a timer, so is that going to be okay? Though? That's going to be okay. So we're ready to combine the plate together. We're going to get in our burrata. Okay. So burrata is like a mozzarella. So the zucchini. Oh, okay. We're going to cut it in pieces and I'll let you do that. Oh, you'll let me do Okay. Yeah. Look at all these colors working together. All right, let's try. What do you yes. think? Okay. Well, I think I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a masterpiece. And the idea is to indulge a different vegetable with a bite of cheese. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Cheers. That tomato. Oh my god, it's so flavorful. And I like the notes of the dry oregano. On it. it almost feels like you're eating like an actual like big dish of pasta, oh, but in totally, one bite. Totally, totally. With a glass of Prosecco or whatever is a nice lunch, you know, where you can entertain your palate, you know, and get fed, you know, good ingredients. Yeah. Like, ooh, buonissimo. If y'all are traveling to San Antonio, you have to make Nona a must-do destination here at the Fairmont Hotel. I'm going to enjoy my Prosecco and this beautiful view. Cheers, y'all. There's a variety of different restaurants and bars here on the San Antonio Riverwalk, but there's only one with authentic British pub food and servers and kilts. Mad Dogs is one of the most unique places on the Riverwalk because of what you offer besides just your food and drinks. How would you describe the atmosphere of Mad Dogs? Well, we, we obviously look, look to bring good quality products and service to, to our guests. Uh, and of course our guests come from all over the world. We're, we're fortunate enough to have international travelers as well as conventioners and, and holiday makers. But um, we really wrap everything we do up in, in a, a big helping of fun. Great name and obviously great food and drinks. Tell us a little bit about your special pints and some of your unique foods. Well, we, we, we cater for a broad spectrum of visitors. So we are a casual dining American um, menu to all, all parts, but we focus and elevate our Britishness that comes with Yards. Yards was uh, very much a, a drinking tradition in England in the old pubs. Um, we also have a, a good variety of very British food. Our biggest seller is fish and chips made with cold North Sea cod. We'd like to show you how we prepare our fish and chips, which is our favourite and particularly special because we, we peel uh, potatoes Ooh. and cut them and fry them old style rather I than like have that. them bought in. We also want to at least show you another delicacy that I didn't mention which is a scotch egg. I love that. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Well we're here with Jonathan who's our executive chef. Uh, he's going to be working on a combination of dishes here. Uh, first of all, he's going to be dropping our scotch egg 
which is a real favourite appetiser of ours. It's actually ground pork, which is bread crumbed uh, around uh, a pre-cooked hard boiled egg. Uh, in the meantime, he's preparing um, fillet of cod. Cod is very much the go-to fish used for traditional fish and chips in the United Kingdom. First of all, it's been breadcrumbed to hold the batter, and the batter we actually make with flour, some seasoning, but it's made with two types of British beer. One oh, is wow. harp, which is a light beer from Ireland, and the second is bass. Wow, all this food looks delicious. Jonathan, you did a great job cooking this all up for us. To start with, we have our scotch eggs here. Uh, they start off as a hard boiled egg. We wrap in a uh, breakfast sausage. Texans like to eat with their hands, right? Mmm. Mmm. That's very good. Usually, we don't have salads for dessert, but I know this one is more on the sweeter side. This salad is a maple apple salad mm. with chicken. Mmm. Very refreshing. And I like the the dressing, very light, and it will get you warmed up for your main courses. And one of the great things about cod is how wonderfully flaky it is and how wonderful uh, flavor that can stick to it due to the fact that we are using two different beers. It's flaky, it's fresh, but you're right, the, the beer battered crust is amazing. Good pub grub. <laughs> Whether it's enjoying a yard or people watching on the river walk, you can enjoy a little piece of Britain right here in South Texas. That's what we strive for, to put out good barbecue. Nina, thank you so much for having us out here. You are so welcome. Tell us a little bit about Smitty's. Well, we're sitting in the original barbecue place. This was built in 1924 by the Kreitz family. And my dad, Smitty, started working for the Kreitz family when he was 13. And in 1948, I guess he had built up enough, enough trust uh, that the Kreitz family sold it to him. And they con he continued to operate as Kreitz Market okay. until 1999, the building did change hands. Smitty was in here 50 years, building it as a barbecue place, so we put his name on it. So tell me a little bit about the barbecue itself, the meats and the flavors. Well, of course, brisket is <laughs> the Central Texas exactly. barbecue. Exactly. When they think, you think of barbecue, you think of brisket. We do have pork chops, pork ribs, and then smoked turkey. But everything we have is cooked right back there on the pits. We don't have any gas or electric cooking our meats. So tell me about no forks. That's the way it's always been. Yeah. We're very casual here, okay. very laid back. Oh. If you don't mind, can we take a look around the building sure. and maybe sure. do a little taste testing? Sure. When someone comes here and they don't know what to expect, walk us through that step by step. We want people, when they walk through those double doors there, we want it to be an awesome step back to the 20s and 30s. You know, we show them to the pit area and tell them the pit area is where you see your meats and you order there. Everything is, like I say, cooked over open pit flamery. Oh, we got briskets, we got turkey. Oh my God, this looks amazing. It is an art for them. They don't put it in a cooker and set the temperature. Right. They have to know when to turn it. And then you go to the dining room and get your sides and drinks, and then you sit down and eat together. Do you mind showing me how you eat the Nina special? Sure. All right. We'll have to, to go get, get some brisket. A, a piece of brisket, and we'll go sit down. I like to take me a soda cracker. Okay. And here we have two slices of good brisket. Yes. Which brisket's gonna have the fat in it. Uh -huh. well, that's what makes your little sandwich good with that salty cracker. <laughs> yes. And you take some good old cheddar cheese and pile it on top. Right. And then you take a piece of probably Texas grown tomato. Texas grown tomato. And then some avocado. And you use your fingers. In Texas we and Smitty's, we use our fingers. Use our fingers. There we go. Brisket, onion, cheddar, avocado, tomato. Right. Here we go. She did it. She got it all in there. Mm -hmm. Works. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's delicious. I can't tell you thank you enough. This is amazing. Yeah. We enjoyed it too. We enjoy having 
showing what we have to offer to the public because we're, we think it's special. It is, it is. Thank you. Cheers. Y'all, I'm killing this. Straight killing. Straight killing. Shoot, shoot, got too excited. I know you were talking about Emerald when I was growing up. I used to like love to go bam at the very end of like everything. <laughs>